Hi everyone, it's Rena. So this video is for Gemini Rising, also known as the Ascendant. And the difference between the Sun and Rising signs is that the Rising sign is more about the image that you project onto others. So it can also um, relate to your physical appearance and the clothing style that you choose. The sun sign is more of the core personality, okay? So we have different layers to us, and even if you consider yourself a pretty genuine person that you're not fake, you don't um, have a false front, and that what you see is what you get, chances are you still initially act or present yourself in a way which differs from those that are very, very close to you. And this is what the rising sign may kind of uh, indicate. Also, I've been talking about how I believe the rising sign is really connected to the family of origin and the conditioning from them. And uh, having read a book or an article about how the rising sign is most influential for the first 30 years of life, I kind of thought about it and said, well, what is going on at the age of 30 that would indicate a break from, from that? And that's when the first Saturn return occurs. So the, the first Saturn return is important because it usually indicates that the person is becoming an adult in the fullest sense of the word, where they are not um, that influenced by their childhood anymore, but they are taking responsibility for the choices that they are making and things like that, and getting more serious about life. So to me, it's like, uh, since the rising sign is based on the time of birth and the first house, it's on the cusp of the first house, okay? It sets up your whole natal chart, your rising sign. And um, the the first house can be those first years of life, what you come into this lifetime with. And it can indicate, you know, having certain planets in the first house, like Saturn, for instance, or Pluto, can actually indicate having a um, rough you know, initiation into this world in this lifetime. But the rising sign can also indicate the type of family that you come from, just like the moon can indicate the type of mother you have. So looking at it from Gemini rising perspective, the person may come from a family that values learning or knowledge or education. They may have parents who are educators, and there can be a certain detachment. Uh, look also to your moon sign to see how you were nurtured because Gemini is an air sign. It's ruled by Mercury. So it's interested in, I was going to say in facts, not in feelings. Okay. And this can lead the person to have to kind of cope. That's another thing too. The rising sign, I think sometimes there's a coping mechanism that allows you to fit into that family of origin. So let's say your son is in a water sign and you're naturally very emotional and you grow up and people, your parents kind of like you have uh, feelings and they, and they rationalize them away. They send you to therapy where you talk about your feelings, but you never really get to express them emotionally because they're uncomfortable with emotions. So what do you do? You learn to adapt to that and you become like them, but it's only on the surface. If your if your sun sign or your moon sign is in a water element then like that would be Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, you will tend to, you might shove your feelings away, but they may come out, especially later on. And um, you will naturally be attracted to those things that they emphasize. So you would be attracted to anything involving media, writing, 
the news of the day um, and things like that. And so this can make the person uh, very inclined to go into that field even because it's familiar to them. And um, so they may be wanting to be a journalist or or maybe a teacher or something like that. So you tend to be very high, uh, fast paced. And I was going to say high, and I meant high strung. And this is really something you can kind of uh, sense in a person who has Gemini rising, especially if they have a son in Taurus or you know, I was just thinking today about Taurus because I have Taurus rising and I think sometimes I'm like a rock if I'm just sitting there. And yet Gemini rising is like a Mexican jumping bean. If you've ever seen one of those where they're just like constant uh, movements, very frenetic sometimes movements, uh, can't sit still, can't stop talking, a chatterbox. And this really has to be uh, kept an eye on for a Gemini rising person to make sure that they don't talk somebody's ear off, especially when you first meet them, because it just may be a part of your image or personality that you project where you just start talking and talking and you don't know when to stop. The other thing, too, when talking about this high-strung temperament is sometimes this person can be, maybe they're kind of snappish, and they um, they get easily irritated, and their minds are moving quite rapidly, and their tongues are moving quite rapidly, so there's not a lot of space in between the thoughts. And this can lead to irritability because obviously if you're just um, mindlessly talking away, it's hard to have that kind of uh, calm. And they, t the Gemini rising also tends to be very flexible in being able to adapt to new conditions. And this leads to sometimes wanderlust where the person may just instinctively want to travel a lot, but not necessarily have goals sometimes. There might just be, it might just be a little bit too interested in change for the sake of change and not being mindful enough about what the purpose is. And yet, it is a very good attribute to be able to adapt to new circumstances. For some Gemini rising people, you may have been um, brought up in military families where you were forced to move house a lot and you didn't get to stay in one place and you had to make new friends. You had to always be flexible t to other people's uh, more entrenched environments. And this can be slightly traumatic for somebody if their son is in, um, <laughs> I was going to say Gemini, I, I meant uh, cancer, for instance, because cancer really does value home and family. And so somebody with a son in cancer and Gemini rising who has this situation occur, can actually be contradictory where they what they want most of all, what they value most of all, is a happy home life. And yet they may still have those, you know, those, they, they may still feel compelled to leave a situation as soon as it becomes a little bit too predictable. And that can lead when somebody just like takes off as soon as things become predictable, they never lay down any roots. And somebody who has a son in Taurus or son in Cancer, they really love to have roots. So that can, they can be their own worst enemy in that way until they get a handle 
on the fact that this was that that this tendency is actually conditioned into them. This isn't really their true way of wanting to live. And um, so, until you really find yourself and you kind of um, can take those influences. and integrate them into your whole being, you may act against yourself in some ways that you really don't want to, to act. But if your sun sign is in Aries or Sagittarius, you may embrace this quality about yourself and really love the idea of being an adventurer and maybe even getting a career where you're a travel a journalist or a blogger, I guess you could call it in 2018. So we have to look at the sun sign to see how different it is from the rising sign and how the two parts uh, can fit together. And talking about physical appearance of Gemini's, uh, they're supposed to be kind of on the taller side and skinny, but of course, this isn't always going to be the case. And, you know, I personally know uh, somebody who has Gemini rising who doesn't fit this bill. But look at their hands, they may have because uh, Gemini rules the hands. And 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 I'm, I was just looking at some of my reference material, and I didn't see that specifically. So hopefully, I'm not stating something so assuredly, and I'm wrong about it. But um, from my past reading, I remember them saying that Gemini rules the hands, and therefore dexterity. So uh, Gemini people may be very good at fine motor skills doing, you know, doing tasks that require a lot of talent in, in a very dexterous sort of way. And you might see that they adorn their hands or maybe even their wrists. So the typical things we would think of are rings and bracelets. And it's funny because when I was um, thinking about doing this video, I always had to bring it back to myself, of course. And I was thinking how I never got into bracelets. Even when the charm bracelet fad was around when I was a kid in the 70s, I never, I could never understand how people could wear bracelets. They irritate me. And so I do see people who wear uh, a lot of rings or they wear, and they seem to emphasize the hands. Oh, here's another one. Maybe a manicure. Something else I've never had in my life is a manicure. And so maybe, uh, People with Gemini rising really love to get manicures more than the average person. Um, and that just to adorn the hands in some way. Maybe they gesture a lot with their hands. Or I say they, I, mean, I should say you. Maybe you gesture a lot with your hands. But definitely can be very witty can be a, a consummate salesman. Here's the deal, though, with that, because there's a lot of um, facile, uh, ability to speak. In other words, these people are very glib. You are very glib. T uh, you tend to be no matter what your sun sign is. But if the person has, if you have a, a moon, particularly in a water sign, maybe a sun sign too, um, watch for the tendency to, manipulate. And you may even do this in a job like a used car salesman, where you appeal to other people's emotions in a very crafty kind of a way. Because Gemini is also known as that person who can um, be, you know, this is the shadow side, obviously, deceptive using words. Okay, so the used car salesman, oh, they shouldn't get such a bad rap. But the person who is trying to sell something and not being 100% honest about the attributes of the product. And let me see what else I wanted to say about this placement. Just basically, as I started out, uh, you know, I think of that song by the Beatles, Here, There, and Everywhere. Paul McCartney, Gemini, <laughs> son in Gemini. And uh, 
It's interesting about Paul McCartney. He has the sun in Gemini, the moon in Leo, and Virgo rising. Now, uh, the that kind of interests me. Um, Virgo is ruled by Mercury, just like Gemini is. So you will see that Virgo people and Gemini people sometimes have similar traits. The only difference is that Virgo people would be considered the more practical of the two. Gemini people love knowledge for knowledge's sake and can be, you know, great trivia people, but they may not, you know, they may not accum accumulate facts and figures that are necessarily going to um, enhance their lives in a practical way. If they want to go on Jeopardy, they're going to clean up. If they, if they want to, you know, learn how to fix something, they may not have those types of facts. And Virgo people tend to be. But so you have uh, Lennon and McCartney both having rising signs that are Earth. And that really intrigues me. You know, what does that mean? Well, when they started out, they were quite young. So their rising signs may have been more on the forefront. And they may have been very savvy as to how to appeal to people in two different kinds of ways. Because both of their sun signs were air. You know, John, Libra, Paul, um, Gemini, although Paul was very close to can or is very close to cancer. He's born on June 18th. So he's very close to cancer. And so he may have that. That's why Paul had that sentimental quality to him that people really, you know, that really touched people so much. But by the same token, they both had this earth element that was projected onto the public. So you can think of it in terms of appearance, in terms of knowing uh, this concrete way of appealing to the public in order to make money, in order to increase their popularity. Okay. So, um, you know, for Paul, particularly shaking his head, having those haircuts. Um, I think John was the first one to, for some of the trends in terms of um, what they wore, I think John, you know, he uh, was wearing leather, you know, that, that was very early on in their career. But just things like that, little touches like that, and even music, you know, that, that, was, uh, that has a certain precision uh, they could associate with Virgo rising, but then John Taurus, that's Venus, that's associated with music. So you can see how the rising sign can really impact people and give them a sense of popularity and success. So for Gemini, a lot of this is going to be with using words and using them in a way that is very um, noteworthy, where people sit up and take notice and say, wow, this person is very clever. They really know how to uh, turn a phrase. And that can help you to promote you. When you don't know someone and you can kind of um, turn on that Gemini quality, you can really uh, impress them with that. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this Gemini Rising. And if you would like a private reading, which does look at not only your rising sign, but a lot of other stuff in your chart, and also looks at the next 12 months and special times, please check out my website, rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.